Lin takes her leave of Efren, finding no aid from its spiteful Marquis. Now, she and her companions resume their march towards Kaelin in all earnest, racing against time with her grandfather's life the prize. Harried and impatient, Lin presses onward. Suddenly, a young boy appears and pleads for their assistance. Chapter 7, Siblings Abroad Hi everyone, I'm Sindre9, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem 7. Please, somebody, somebody, please help! That's enough, get out now, I want none of your trouble. But sir, why? You were so kind yesterday. I thought you were just two kids, a couple of traveling performers. Those men are chasing you. You must be up to no good. Now get up and get out. You're a plague on decent folk. But... <sighs> what a mess. Hmm. Where are we, Kent? This is Catholic. If we head due south, we'll pass into Kaelin. From here, I'd say we're about a 10 days ride to Castle Galen. Assuming we don't run into any delays, of course. 10 days. Pardon me, but... Yes? Can I help you? You and your friends, are you mercenaries? And if we are? I need your help! Milady Lindis, you mustn't let your guard down, not even for a child. I know. Forgive me, but we're in a hurry. Is there someone else you can ask? There's no time! Minion's been... It's my sister! Some men have taken her away! Your sister? Did you say your sister's been accosted? Sane. That's right! By some cruel, awful men! I don't know what I'll do without Ninian. Milady Lindis, we must help him. Nonsense! We haven't the time! If the Marquis is as ill as we've heard, we must proceed. Kent, I... I want to help this child. Milady? I'm worried about my grandfather, of course. But this... I cannot stand by and let a child be taken from her home. I see. I'm sorry, Kent. I am your loyal retainer. You owe me no apologies. You must do as your heart dictates, my lady. I will follow you, no matter where that may lead. Thank you. <laughs> Such a noble speech. Ever the true knight, that one. Ah, well. You're in luck, laddie. Let's go get your sister. Will you lead us to the men who've done this? Uh-huh. They're really tough, so be careful. Leave them to us. We're pretty tough ourselves. Right, Syndrome? <laughs> Definitely. Hi. Hello. You look different. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> found him. Come on, it's back to Nurgle with you. Quiet now. No! Let Ninian go! Oh, he ain't supposed to kill you, but we sure can rough you up. Get him! Huh? Who do you think you are? Lin! Let the boy's sister go. You want to help the kid, eh? What a shame. You're going to die for something that don't concern you. You think so, do you? Do we look so meek to you? I think you're in for a terrible shock. Stupid girl. You'll regret those words. Take them down, boys. Starting with this chapter, you'll be able to use the preparation screen. 
On this screen, you can choose who will fight, equip different items, arrange your formation, among other things. If you have no special preparations to make, simply press start. This starts the chapter with the same group you were using at the end of the last chapter. Ah, the, pep the preparation screen. After a certain point in Fire Emblem games, you get access to this screen. There's usually some... There's usually a few chapters before you begin to get this screen. Just like it did here. We had six chapters and now we get the preparation screen. Here you can pick uh, units. You are limited to a certain number of units per map. We haven't had this issue just because, again, we've not had the preparation screen. Pick zero more units and you can see how many units you can field. Eight out of eight. Which means we can have eight units. You can also trade and trade items. There are some other commands, but we'll uh, get to them when they become relevant. Um, you take this. You take this. Hmm. I have to keep a close eye on Matthew. He does not have a uh, vulnerary. Um, Armor Slayer, huh? And this will take up some time each each episode. What I may do is do preparations off screen and then kind of go over what what I ended up doing. It'll mainly be switching, just switching items around. Is typically what it is. Speaking of switching items around... Um... Who else is gonna get benched? Because I'm taking Matthew along. I'll probably give Kent one more chance. <laughs> well, a few more chances. You take the Volinary. I think I'll sit sane for this one. Who do I want to give the angelic robe to? That's the question. For now, I may not use it, but uh, Lynn can hold on to it. Okay. Well, actually, that's a it's a bad idea. I should keep. Hold on to this. You're not going into battle. Okay. Anything else? Iron hand axe, heal, fire. Take this. Because you're going to need it. <clears throat> And I think that'll be it. If you hear something in the background, I apologize. It's my fan. It's really hot today. <laughs> okay. And you may not be able to because it's on pretty light, but just in case. That shows up in the recording and you're wondering, what's that buzzing sound in the background? Yeah, I apologize. I usually have it off, but... I said it's really hot today. Okay. Let's let's give that a try. Sane really could use the levels. <laughs> and if Kent Kent stop and if Kent gets keeps getting bad level ups then. Uh, it's typically called the people that are not not playing or on the bench. You know, like like uh, sports people. You know that aren't playing or on the bench. Uh, same thing. People use that expression. Just in case you hear that. You can check the map, <clears throat> and you can see what's what's out there before you head out. Black Fang. 
Members of the Black Fang, a League of Assassins. This is a shaman, students of dark magic, powerful but slow. This is a new class. They use dark magic. They see dark. Uh, this is Flux, the uh, D rank tome. I'm not even sure if there is an E rank tome for uh, dark magic. There might be. Might 7, weight of 8, hit of 80%. Dark magic is very heavy, which contributes to how slow shaman are. But they're typically very powerful as well. I see this spell has a might of seven. We compare that to Urk's uh, tomb of uh, fire tomb, which has a might of five, and the difference in power will only increase. <laughs> Dark magic is very powerful in FE7. It's usually pretty good but in in this one uh some people say it's a tad overpowered i i think it's okay the the lack of speed really really balances it out to me usually <laughs> this shaman is nothing special he does have a fair bit of defense users of black magic typically have higher defense than your typical mage not a lot, but they typically do. They typically have some more defense. Only two resistance. So he has some pretty bluff stats. But the uh, Dark Tomb is going to make him hit pretty hard. Uh, we have an Iron Bow. Here we have a Vendor. We haven't seen a Vendor. We've seen an Armory. Uh, vendors... Vendors sell items, and sometimes they also, they also, uh, sometimes they still s sell staffs as well. We'll, we'll see when we get there. But there's a vendor, we have a couple of houses here, uh, some forts along the way, this archer. Ooh, this brigand drops an iron lance, perfect. <clears throat> Iron Sword, Iron Sword, a Mage, who has a Fire Tomb himself, Iron Axe, another Shaman, another Shaman, and our boss for this level, Heinz, one of the Black Fang, pursues Niles ruthlessly. Shaman, students of Dark Magic, powerful, very slow, he's level 5. <clears throat> So he does have some better stats, get a little bit of resistance, uh, a little bit of defense, sorry, some resistance. We'll get to that in a little bit. And our uh, new party member isn't out here, so we can't take a look at him until the uh, turn starts. <clears throat> now the other thing you can do on the preparation screen, which is really important, is formation. Lords are usually set. You 99 times out of a hundred for story missions. In some Fire Emblems, you have uh, maps that you can you can play afterwards, or side maps, or uh, not even side maps. Just uh, hard to explain. I guess you call them skirmishes. Anyway, the lords are set. You can't move them. However, other party members you can. As you can see here. You can switch them around however you want. Uh, units with low movement I tend to put uh, closer to the front. Just that way they can, they can keep up for a little while. So set up the uh, units how you would like. I'll do I suppose and you can also save that way you can save all your 
for you can save your formation and everything like that all the trades you've done before you head out to the map when you're ready hit start I see we're facing a shaman syndrome I've heard that practitioners of the dark arts are fearsome foes we'll have to be careful what who are you Please forgive me. I never meant to startle you. Your robes! They look like the religious vestiary. Are you an Elmine bishop? Yes. Well, no. I'm only an acolyte. An Elmine monk, to be specific. My name is Lucius. Do you have business with us? I was at the end. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I was at the inn when this child came seeking help. The innkeeper was afraid to get involved. He was... unpleasant. I wasn't afraid of him! I'm used to being treated that way. That's awful. May I please lend you my services? I truly wish to help the boy, if only a little. Of course. Thank you very much. The blessings of St. Elmine are be upon you. Now I know what you're thinking. It. Uh, Lucius looks female. However, he's not. That's a male. Just with really long hair. <laughs> Don't worry, I made the mistake too. <laughs> but it's kind of got the same facial features like Lynn. So you kind of put two and two together and think maybe it's, uh, it's a female, but it's not. It's a male. The monk Lucius has joined your group. Monks are users of the magic of light. Those who wield magic are highly attuned to its flow, so they have a high magic resistance. I've gone over this. Units with high magic resistances can reduce the damage caused by magical attacks. When magic users battle each other, they often find it hard to inflict damage. The light magic of monks is strong against the dark magic favored by shamans. Lucius should come in handy here. Let's put his magic to the test. Have Lucius attack the shaman nearest him. And we'll do that now. You wish for me to attack the shaman? Very well. Lightning is the E-rank light tomb, which is really cool. And he'll double him and not take much back. Let me briefly go over the magic triangle. Now that you have the weapon triangle pretty set in your mind more than likely, the magic triangle goes as follows. Uh, anima magic is strong against light magic. Light magic is strong against dark magic. And dark magic is strong against anima magic. There you go. It's just like the weapon triangle. Except it's just with different types of magic. And remember anima magic being the elemental magic. Like fire. Like Urk's fire tone. So Urk would be strong against Lucius. Lucius is strong against the shaman. And the shaman is strong against Urk. There you go. Let's get started. Can help too. Nels, can you fight? No. But I'm a bard, and bards are useful to have around. A bard? Do you mean you're a minstrel? This is no place for a ballad. Come on, trust me. I'm all yours, Syndral. It's time to see what Nels can do. The music played by bards allows your allies to move twice in the same turn. However, bards cannot engage in combat, so be careful not to expose them to danger. You'd like me to play for Lucius, right? Yes, I would. Play!
What do you think? That was lovely. Invigorating, even. You ought to play for me sometime. I could use the boost. Everyone could. My music can refresh you all. Through the power of Nal's music, Lucius can move again this turn. Bars gain experience by playing music. Use Nal's powers often and increase his skill. And now Lucius can go again. <clears throat> Goodbye. And now we begin chapter seven proper. Our objective is to defeat the boss. Now, let's uh, go over the different characters. Niles, a bard possessing arcane powers. Brother of Ninian. Musicians whose melodies aid allies, unable to attack. Now there's something to to see what does Niles not have? That's right. He doesn't have a weapon. That's because bards cannot attack. Now this is kind of <clears throat> hit or miss. Sorry, my throat is just not working with me this episode. Sometimes uh, bards or musicians or whatever they're <laughs> whoever has this ability to refresh units. It's called refreshing units. Uh, sometimes they do have the ability to attack. They can use a weapon and sometimes they don't. In Fire Emblem 7, they don't. So you have to keep them safe. Now, they are an acquired taste, admittedly. Uh, my first time playing Fire Emblem as a kid, I really didn't use them. I didn't use them as much as I should have, to be honest. They are extremely handy, though. Being able to move a unit again to get an extra attack, or maybe to move a little farther get in range for a uh, for a attack that they couldn't have on their own they are extremely handy to have around they typically have pretty high avoidance as well because they have so much speed uh, they could typically dodge but do not count on that they are very vulnerable to attacks and you should strive to not have them swung at <laughs> Uh, I'll throw up Nell's stats up now. So, as you would expect, they have very practically no skill, uh, strength and skill growth because they can't use weapons. There's really no reason for these stats anyway. So, expect them both to stay at zero. He does have a 5% chance, which is funny, but... Um, yeah, you don't expect them to uh don't expect them to go up. A lot of speed, a big speed growth, really big luck growth as well. Um really high resistance and low defense. Uh they these type of units typically just have low defense overall, so the uh really big resistance is kinda cool, honestly. To protect them from magic. That's really all there is to say. No weapon skills. It's pretty, uh... Pretty much what you... What you see is what you're gonna get. The biggest selling point is their special ability to make units move again. And that's how they'll get experience, as the game said. They have to play, because they can't get into combat. You can think of them like a like a cleric that way because they can't they can't get in combat they have to use their other abilities to gain exp and that's um that's about it honestly <laughs> use them well and they will help you out tremendously again just remember they're highly vulnerable Lucius, a traveling acolyte, gentle and serene. He is the monk class, aesthetics who wield light magic but can't use staffs, unlike a cleric 
which uses staffs. <laughs> so, light magic. Like I said, he comes with the lightning tomb. It is the E-rank light magic tomb. As you see, it only has a might of 4, so it's not very powerful. And it has a weight of 6. But it has a very high hit percentage at 95, and it does have a slight critical uh, bonus too, a 5. I'll throw up Lucius' stats now. You can think of him just like a magic user, because that's what he is. Except he's a light magic user. Um, very low defense, low HP growth, but high magic skill and resistance growth. Again, monks use the light magic tomb. Use light magic tombs to attack. Um, some people don't like Lucius for whatever reason. I like him a lot, so expect me to be using him. It's typically hard to use light magic users, though, because you'll not come up against... It's hit or miss how, how many dark magic users you'll come up against in Fire Emblem games. Which can make their light magic tombs not as useful as you would think. But I really like him. Yes, the low HP growth is troubling, but that's a mage. He has really good magic growth at 50%. 50-50 chance he'll get magic to hit even harder. A pretty good, uh, pretty decent speed growth at 40%. And a high resistance growth. Like I said, there are... Um, some some people that really don't like him as long as he ends up getting a little bit of luck and speed along the way and a little bit of HP he'll turn out to be a really good unit so I've had good luck with Lucius in the past so I'm going to I'm probably going to use him I like him Alright, that begins this explanation for the uh, new new characters and things. The sad part is we're almost almost uh, 30 minutes in already, which is same shame, and that's what could begin to happen now that we have the preparation screen and still new units. That may end up being an episode, and then the actual playing of the map could be an episode which is admittedly maybe a little boring to all of you, but considering what I'm doing with this LP, trying to explain as much as I can for people who are not as familiar with Fire Emblem, or would just like to get advice on, on different things, or my opinion, I think I'll do, I'll uh, visit these two houses, and then probably in the episode and next time we'll uh, do the map proper and uh, beat the enemies and visit this this village okay let's have visit quite a group you've gotten yourself involved with. You do know you're facing the Black Fang, right? Anyone they target winds up, well, you know. No one escapes the Fang. That's what they say anyway. You and those odd children? I'd say you're finished. Not that I have any part of it. Of course not. I'm up here? Good, good. That's a crit! Thank you, Kent, <laughs> for showing that off. <laughs> love that animation. Per usual, I love the animations in, uh, in Fire Emblem 7. And we'll visit this house. Hmm. Maybe I could get some firewood out of it. Hmm? Who's there? Who are you? Ah, you're just passing through? Pay me no mind. I was just thinking out loud. You see, there's an old tree on the other side of this mountain. 
It's just a dead old snag, really. I was just thinking of some way I could put it to good use. As I said, it's nothing that need concern you. Huh, really? Well, that's not entirely true. Let me go over this. Uh, this little snag here, as you can see, you can break it down. It has uh, 20 HP, just like when we saw we could break down a wall. When you break down branches like this in Fire Emblem games, you have an option to break down you know, walls or trees like this, something happens. Typically when you break down trees like this, they'll fall over and form a bridge. This will be useful down the road. Keep it in mind. I'll finish up this first turn and then I'll end the episode. Move in here. Now we could have Priscilla go down here and attack. Yes, that, that is a deal. <laughs> you can do that. However... I think I'll just have her wait here. Wait, and... This is the other thing that can happen. Your uh, bards can end up getting left behind because they'll help somebody move, and then everybody else moves forward. <laughs> so it can happen. It's just something to to keep watch of. Uh, one last thing this episode. Let's go over the vendor. General Store. How can I help you? We have Volunary, Heal Staffs, and Fire Tombs. Where is... Hmm. I'll buy a Fire Tomb. No, just one. A Volinary. And a heal staff. I'll buy one of each. And now the enemy will begin charging your position. I don't think Lin can quite make it. No, sadly not. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and had a lot of fun. We have two new, two new people, and we'll show them off even more next time. Till then, I'm Sundray9. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.